Welcome. You're listening to The Aligned Self, conversations in creating a conscious and abundant life. This is Daniel DeNovi. I'll be your guide and host. Let's see just where we can take this. Hello, friend, and welcome into the conversation. If you've been listening along, you realize that I've been teasing this series on manifesting. Well, in this conversation today, we're going to wade deep into the water. And aspects of what we're going to be talking about will definitely visit in detail, rich detail. Other aspects I'll just mention, and most people have a familiarity with the topic in general, but the ones that I mention, I'll promise to give a deeper dive into in its own specific episode. And I'll probably mention in the conversation Oh, we're going to cover that in another episode. So if this goes according to plan, at the end of this, we'll have a cohesive whole where all the episodes will seamlessly fit together. And just as a matter of course, since I've been visiting this whole topic of manifestation and it is an integral part in the Aligned Self podcast, more than likely I'm going to discuss and touch upon ideas that I've already gone in depth on or dedicated perhaps an entire episode to. And in that case, I'll just reference the past episode and lead you there. Also mentioned in a previous episode, I'm putting together a study guide. So you can follow the link in the show notes or go to yesdaniel.com to get access to that study guide. And then there's one more thing I want to mention before we get our feet wet in this episode. And that is that I am putting together a course on manifesting, manifesting mastery. I realized that I had a lot of content here and probably more than I'm going to be able to talk about inside the podcast episodes. And granted, some of the ideas are best expressed visually. So you can look forward to that and you can learn more about the courses I offer at yesdaniel.com forward slash courses. So are you ready? Let's get wet. Let's start out with the basic question. What is manifesting? Put simply, manifestation is the process of moving from thought to creation. And that may be a material thing, it may be an emotional state, it may be a set of conditions or circumstances that you're manifesting or creating. This conversation is occurring at the intersection of science and spirituality, psychology and spirituality some proven ideas, and then some that might be for some of you a little out there. But all I ask you is to reserve any judgment, set it aside, and validate it for yourself. Meaning, put it into practice. See if it works for you. Entertain the idea. You see, a lot of people try to disqualify information to ascertain whether or not it's true. Is it fact? We're more interested here, is it effective? Does it work? It may not be true necessarily, but hey, it works. And so if it works, we're more concerned with that than whether or not it's the truth. And then also I need to, I guess, say that I'm psychic. I get a lot of my information through downloads. And I had a huge download back in the early 90s when I was sitting in a dentist chair, all about manifestation. How do we create reality? And I've been trying to make sense of it ever since. So as we talk about this, you're going to hear things that might sound familiar, things that other people are saying, and then you're going to hear some stuff or hear it in a way from from a perspective, having trouble spitting it out, from a perspective that is new and it's uniquely mine. So getting back to the whole process of manifesting, personally, I believe from my meditations and my readings and my life... I've come to the conclusion that our purpose on the planet, our purpose of being alive, you being alive, the the meaning of life, is to create, to learn to go through the process of manifesting our reality. And I consider the epic adventure, the greatest adventure ever, is creating who we're going to be in this adventure, in this journey. So from a practical point of view, When do you decide, how do you decide that it's time to manifest something? Typically, we experience a gap, a gap between where we are and where we want to be, or we have an experience of lack, and then we want to create 
the non-lack of that. And at the core of fulfilling that gap, fulfilling on that manifestation, is to arrive at a feeling state. Because we think we're going to feel better once we get whatever we want to attract, whatever we want to manifest. Because we really don't want the thing. Let's say it's a car. Let's, let, let's say it's a car. So we don't want the new car because any car would really do. We want how we would feel driving that car. We want what that would mean about us. You see, that's the essence of the manifestation. The form is the car. We're not really that concerned with the car because any car would do. Any mode of transportation would get us between here and there. We want to arrive with a certain feeling. And we'll dive deeper into that down the road here, but just understand that at the end of any manifestation, we want to arrive at a feeling state. So when we consider manifestation on a basic level is to get from point A to point B and understand that every manifestation begins and ends in thought. Meaning that anything that you see in the physical world began as an idea, began as a thought, began as a need that someone saw that they could fulfill, or just an an inspired possibility. So what follows is I'm going to give you two different perspectives on manifesting. One is from the 3D dimension, the third dimension, the material world. The other is from the fifth dimension, or 5D manifesting, or in other words, quantum manifesting. So first, if we talk about the three-dimensional way of manifesting, we see a result we want to create. We want to get from point A to point B, and we start to develop a plan to get from here to there. We realize that we have to do something in order to get a result, and it's very well couched in that idea of cause and effect. We initiate the cause, we think we're going to get a certain effect. It's very Newtonian, Sir Isaac Newton kind of perspective. And from that perspective, we kind of accept that there's a there's going to be some effort involved, some struggle, some some sweat and work. And that belief that anything worth having is worth working for. Society will applaud you. They'll stand by the sidelines clapping, applauding, cheering you on to see you sweat, to see you work hard. And, you know, there's this perception that it's admirable because if you're working that hard, it's going to be worthwhile. You're really going to appreciate it once you get it. You know, there's this idea that if it comes too easily, you'll take it for granted because somehow if it comes harder, you appreciate finally getting there. Well, if you get to a point where you have a creation, where you have your manifestation and you end up taking it for granted... My friend, you take it for granted because you're taking it for granted. You're just not appreciating it. It doesn't matter how it comes to you. It's up to you to be in the mode of appreciation. And rest assured, we're going to have an entire episode on gratitude and appreciation and the power that comes with that. Because I have a firm belief you always get more of what you're thankful for. Now, another characteristic of this three-dimensional manifesting is that when you know that it takes a certain amount of struggle, a certain amount of effort, you may come up against not feeling motivated, having trouble getting yourself motivated to go to work, do the thing. You know, you might have the enthusiasm on the front end of the project, but as time goes on and things get a little bit more tedious, it's easier and easier to become distracted. It's harder and harder to get yourself motivated, to get yourself in action. Because, you know, I just don't want to do it. I don't want to go to work today. And it's easy just to get caught up in the struggle of it, the not wanting to do it. And you lose sight of why you wanted to do it to begin with. And I need to say that it's not that this process does not get results. When you're committed to getting a result and you have a big enough why... In the words of Friedrich Nietzsche, you will bear any how. If you have a big enough why, you will bear any how to get the result. But that process is not the focus of this series on manifestation. 
on the flip side of it, what we're going to spend the greatest amount of time on is the quantum level of manifesting, manifesting from the fifth dimensional thinking. And from this perspective, it is not cause and effect. From this perspective, it is effect cause. You see, we focus on the effect that we want to create, the manifestation, the creation. We align our mind, body, and spirit with the manifestation, with the having of that effect. We rely on law of attraction. Law of attraction is the law of the universe. It is always working, and what it says is like attracts like. So, from this dimension of manifestation, we align our heart, our mind, and our body, aligned with the having or being the person that would naturally have this result. How our actions are, our feeling, our thinking, it's all aligned with the fulfillment of that. And that state of being is the attracting force, the magnetizing force that draws that manifestation, draws that creation into our life. It can be done effortlessly. But sometimes it does require you to do something to get into position, to make connection. But that doing is still in the process of thinking. It's inspired action. And this whole process of alignment is going to be what we dive deeper into in this whole series. But right now, understand that this is an overview, but remembering that at the end of every manifestation is a feeling state that we're really after. And so when we get connected to that feeling state, the feeling of the wish fulfilled, what does it sound like? What does it look like? What does it feel like to actually be in possession of this manifestation, whether it's money, a car, a circumstance, a relationship? What's it feel like? What's it feel like to actually live in the having of that desire? And then when we get really connected, really present to, calibrate to that desired state, what does it feel like to have that wish fulfilled? We can then recognize when any of our actions, when any of, any of our thinking is incongruent with the having of that manifestation. And understand as we move forward, this feeling of congruence is key. It's paramount. So what might be an example of that? Okay, let's, Joyce wanted a relationship. She wanted it really bad. She'd been single for 20 years and she was ready for a partner. She was ready to stop doing things alone and start inviting a partner to share her life with. So she started looking around her life and began questioning, where am I living incongruently with my desire? She looked at her closet, which was stuffed full of clothes. It was just her. She looked around the bedroom and she saw that she had one nightstand. So she ended up buying a second nightstand for the partner on the other side. She cleaned out half her closet so her partner, her new partner, would have place to put their clothes. She also bought a set of matching wine glasses so she could share a nice bottle of wine with her partner. When she was leaving for work the next day, she realized that she was parking in the middle of the garage. So from that day forward, she started parking all the way to one side, leaving room for a second car. She also stopped eating anywhere in her house except in the dining room. And she always had two place settings set at the table because she always thought it would be nice to have dinner on a regular basis with the person that you love, with your partner. She looked everywhere in her life and corrected those areas that were set up for just one person and set it up to accommodate a partner. Now, I want to point out that a lot of times people talk about law of attraction, and it's about not doing anything, just sitting back and waiting for things to come to you. Well, she was proceeding with the expectation that this partner would be showing up, so she was getting ready. She was taking inspired action to make a clearing in her life for a partner to show up in. Because if, you know, someone shows up in your life and suddenly you have to, you know, move stuff off the couch, put clothes away, it's just not very accommodating or welcoming to people to stay. And so she was making sure that her actions and her thinking were congruent with her desire. And I think now might be a good time to talk about desire and wanting, having, you know, a lack in your life. 
and we'll expand a little bit on the law of attraction. You see, your point of attraction is the focus of your thoughts and your emotion. So when we focus on a desire or a missing in our life, a lack in our life, we tend to attract more of that lack. Because remember, like attracts like. So you'll hear in some circles, some teachers, some gurus of manifesting processes will say that desire is bad, wanting is bad, because it just perpetuates more of the wanting. I think this is where you need to calibrate inside, like tune in inside. How does the desire feel? Does it feel like there's a missing? I like to think of it as getting hungry at night. My body tells me or communicates that there's a desire, there's a missing. And I can sit there and bemoan the fact that I'm hungry and I, there's nothing to eat in the house. And I can just sit there and be in my misery. Or I can look at the fact that I have a desire and then I set about to fulfill the desire. I get curious on what would it take to satisfy this desire. What would I like to eat? I start thinking about the effect. Do I want to have an Uber or a Grubhub or some delivery service bring food in, or do I want to go out to a restaurant and place an order? You see, I have the desire, and then I start taking action with the expectation that this desire, this wanting, will be satisfied. And so as I proceed, I live from the perspective, I live from the being of the person that will fulfill on this desire. I will get some food in my body, and I'm going to like it. In fact, I don't want to just have anything. I want to have something that will be satisfying. I start setting up the criteria for what do I want to put in my body. I want it to be healthy. I want it to be nourishing. I want it to be filling and tasteful. And so in being the person that is fulfilling on this desire, I began to consider my options. Where could I eat? Where would I like to eat? What are my different restaurants? And then as I'm thinking about the different foods I can eat, the different restaurants I can visit, at this point in time, I just consider what is the most attractive option? Which one lights up? Which one feels as if it's in alignment with my desire? And then I follow the urge. I I make that selection based on how it feels inside. This is me co-creating. So in that little example, I wasn't just manifesting the meal. I had the desire. Next was to manifest a place to eat. How was I going to eat? Was I going to have it delivered in or go out? I decided I was going to go out. And then I manifested a restaurant or a place that I could visit. You see, it was a series of manifestations. And every manifestation starts with a desire. What's important to understand or become aware of is where is your focus? Are you focusing on the lack of it? Or are you focusing on the fulfillment of it? Are you connected to the feeling of not having it? Or are you connected to the feeling of the wish fulfilled? Now, back to our story about Joyce. See, Joyce reoriented her life, aligned her circumstances, created congruence in her thinking and her behavior and her environment in order to invite in a partner. And as she was looking around her house, she realized that her walls were pretty stark. She was lacking art, which she thought was funny because at one point she was going to school to become an artist. She had this realization that she just wasn't going to be that good to make a lot of money at it. Even though she really enjoyed it, she shifted majors into business. And she got to be very creative and very successful in business. But in looking around, she suddenly had this feeling, this desire to have some art on the walls. She said, I'll have to remedy that and went to bed. Well, the next day at work, she overheard a conversation while at lunch. The table near her was talking about a new art gallery around the corner, and there was an established artist that was headlining the show along with some new artists. She thought to herself, that's perfect. So later that night, she got ready, and she took herself to the art gallery. She got in a conversation with the gallery owner and just fell in love with the art on display. 
she ended up confiding in the gallery owner that she just couldn't decide on which piece she wanted to take home. And then the gallery owner leaned in kind of conspiratorially and asked, Would you like to meet the artist? He could probably help you decide. Joyce responded enthusiastically and said, Yes, I would love that. And so as she was led across the gallery to the artist, she couldn't help think to herself that this guy's kind of attractive. And so the gallery owner made the introductions and told John, the artist, that Joyce was having trouble picking which painting she wanted to take home and was wondering if he could help her out. And he said, I would love to. Well, Joyce ended up asking him a question that allowed him to talk about his work for the next hour. She asked him what his motivations were behind the different pieces, what was his intent, if he could confide on why he chose the colors that he chose. She would really like to know the background behind every painting, the in-depth psyche aspect. And John just ate this up. Well, their conversation went so well, he invited her to dinner the celebratory dinner after the gallery showing with the other artists. Well, at the dinner, Joyce got a chance to talk about her perspective, what she liked about art, what she was drawn to in art, how she was going to be a fine artist at one point in her life, but changed careers. And she had a little bit of regret about that. Well, long story short, they hit it off. Joyce and John hit it off. That dinner led to other dinners and other dates and deeper conversations and intimate connections. And in short order, they were in a relationship. And that connection occurred just a month and a half after she took an assessment to become congruent or in alignment with drawing in a partner. But I want to point out that making that connection with John, the artist, the partnership, occurred because she had a desire to put art on her wall. It came from an impulse and urging to move in a direction to fulfill that desire. You could refer to these as synchronous events, synchronicity or coincidence, but there's no such, because it's implied that coincidental events are just events that coincide in time, randomly. There's no guiding force behind it. But in the context of our conversation, it's synchronicity. It's the universe conspiring, magnetically attracting you to different circumstances and different connections in order to fulfill on your desires, to fulfill on your manifestations. And like I pointed out earlier, many times we fulfill on smaller manifestations on our way to bigger manifestations. So we are always manifesting. We are always in that process of creating ourselves and our lives. We can never not not create. So in that context of the law of attraction is always working, you can take an assessment of the things that you're attracting into your life and discover your point of attraction. Where is your focus? What's your story? What are you committed to right now that is creating the circumstances that are currently in your life? And like Joyce, don't make yourself wrong. Just objectively look at what's going on. And then you can start making different choices, become aligned, get congruent with your desire. Because remembering our point of focus, if we begin worrying about the things we're doing wrong or asking ourselves, what's going wrong? Why isn't this working? Then that becomes your point of attraction. And all you'll get is more information about why it's not working you'll attract more circumstances that just don't pan out for you because your focus is, things aren't working out for me. People referred to this for many, many years as the self-fulfilling prophecy. Put another way, you don't always get what you want, but you usually always get what you expect. Okay, I'm going to revisit the idea that I threw out there that there's two modes to manifesting. One is from a generative state, meaning that you're being the person that is magnetized and drawing what you desire unconsciously and consciously into your life. And that's where you focus on how you feel, how you're being, your heart aligned with your mind and your body. Are you operating your life from a high vibrational place? And we're going to dedicate a whole episode to vibration and frequency But from, in general, from this state, this generative state of being, the better you feel, the more you attract what you want. 
and contrastly, those states that are less than magnificent, those attract circumstances, events that are less than magnificent. Remember, law of attraction is always working. Like attracts like. Now, a lot of people have issue or take an issue with this whole thrust to be in a high vibe state because, frankly, to be in a high vibe state or feeling good all the time just doesn't seem like it's humanly possible. Well, it's not. We have moments where we are less than amazing, less than magnificent, and so it's just being aware of when we're feeling that, giving ourselves permission, acknowledging what's going on, and then shifting our state. So let it be said that in this conversation, in my conversation, we honor all feelings. We don't always indulge our feelings. Because by and large, how we feel at any given moment is the caboose on our train of thought. It's a result of our thinking. It's a result of the choices that we're making in our life. Well, we'll dive deeper into that when we focus on vibration and frequency. And I'll talk about managing your state and how to honor your feelings as you go. And then the second mode of manifesting, where we focused on a specific and detailed intention, we'll talk about how to create that, how to, how to create an intention, a well-formed intention, and then align yourself to that. So if I was to compare and contrast the two modes of manifesting, and if you're new to this, or you've been practicing manifesting and feel stuck, like what you've been intending just isn't coming, you feel blocked, I would suggest you focus on your state, managing your state, managing how you feel, how you focus your mind, connecting with the essence of what you want. We'll talk about form versus essence, how it can move things faster, and a lot of times it's more judicious focusing on the essence of what you want rather than the form of what you want. It gives the universe a lot of latitude to fulfill on your desire. Remember Joyce? She focused on the relationship that she wanted, the criteria and the qualities of the relationship, the types of conversations she would have. She focused or thought about the different qualities that she wanted her partner to possess, and she didn't consider where it might come from, didn't even worry about how she was going to connect, and she was divinely guided to a rendezvous. What I didn't tell you about their connection is that John originally started out in business and shifted to art. I guess what I'm saying is if Joyce would have focused on the form of how she was going to get this guy or this partner and try and figure it out, she probably would have got on some dating app or something that would take her down a lot of detours She never got on a dating app. The universe made the connection for her. All she had to do is think about, vividly, what she wanted, what she was attracting. Speaking of imagining, we're going to have an entire episode on visualization. We'll also revisit scripting, speaking into existence. Some of these are more advanced techniques uh, when you get really specific but And that's why I suggested that you start out with connecting with and managing your vibration, managing your state, your emotional state from day to day, and having practices in place to where you can maintain that lifestyle, maintain that, that focus. Because as you build momentum, and that's important, we want to build momentum, build the energy, accelerating acceleration, by making how you feel a priority in your life You start manifesting things into your life almost immediately because when we focus, and this is the problem when we focus on specific intentions, that if we're too aware of the gap, too aware of the missing, some topics have a certain amount of resistance or limiting beliefs that we have attached to that. And so all that stuff gets in the way. So by focusing on how we feel and allowing the universe to conspire on our behalf, We get to manifest things much faster. And as you build on success, as you achieve a success or have a feeling of success, you can feel more and more confident. You build that belief muscle that you are a manifester, that what you focus on, you attract. And when you build this history, this evidence procedure of manifestation after manifestation, then it gets easier and easier to work on the specifics of what you want. 
probably because you have this feeling of certainty. It will happen. It's going to happen. Like, it, there, no doubt, it's inevitable. Versus the mistake that I see a lot of people making, and we'll have a whole episode on the mistakes and blocks that a lot of people bring to the manifesting process. But the biggest mistake that I see people making is that they pick a topic, they pick an intention that they have a lot of baggage with. There's a lot of resistance. They have a lot of limiting beliefs or doubt that they can do it. And that doubt will kill the dream. That doubt can derail the train. So if you're new to manifesting, if you're new to this whole idea, or maybe you're not that practiced in it, I suggest we focus on your state, managing your emotional vibratory state. And again, we'll have a whole episode on that, but just for now, have an idea where you want to put your attention. And I say that knowing that the seduction is there for you to focus on the big win, focus on the big money, focus on the big relationship. But I have to relay the story of when I learned music, when I, I, I'm a trombone player. And once upon a time, I was pretty good. I traveled Europe. I was with the United States Collegiate Wind Band, and we played concerts all over Europe. Six different countries over eight and a half weeks, standing ovations. So, But I didn't start out that way. At first, I just had to hold a note. Could I hold a note and hold it with a certain amount of tone and consistency? And then I began learning scales. But, you know, I got bored with it at first because, frankly, I wanted to play songs. And unbeknownst to me, when I first started trombone, it's not really the lead instrument. It's a backup instrument. And so there's not a whole lot of solo opportunities for the trombone. So in the beginning, there was a lot of fundamentals that I had to get under my belt. I had to go through the process of learning the horn, learning what I could do. And that's what I think about this, the whole manifesting aspects. There's some basic training you need to get yourself into. And then you can do what I did, get yourself in a jazz band. Well, not specifically and literally in a jazz band, but you can play jazz. You can play life. You can play manifesting as jazz because once you got the fundamentals down, and you have a theme that you want, a melodic theme that you get to play around, then it's all improvisation. But that improvisation and getting it to sound good is not possible when you're first learning. But by contrast, it took me years to get to a point where I could play jazz or be proficient in jazz. In manifesting, if you focused on your vibration, you just focus on feeling good, you'll start manifesting it right away. And oftentimes... The very thing that you want, the big goal, the big win, the big intention shows up without you even really focusing on it because basically you get your doubt out of the way. You get the lack or the focus on the lack of it out of the way and you just focus on having fun. You focus on feeling good and it just shows up when you least expect it. So I guess it could be said that a lot of manifesting is really just getting out of your own way. Now, understand when we talk about frequency, you have a specific signature to who you are. All your dreams and intentions, they're compiled waiting for you, designed and destined for you. Nobody else is going to get your stuff. All your manifestations, all your desires, all your intentions, and some you're not even aware that you've asked for yet, are waiting for you, waiting for you to be ready to be aligned, waiting for you to be open to receive. See, we get in our own way. And a lot of the what we're going to talk about is how to get out of your own way, how to release the limitation, how to release the doubt. Well, my friend, we have a lot to talk about. And if you haven't yet subscribed, I suggest you subscribe so you are notified when each episode is released. And I suggest you get your name on the mailing list to get your free guide, your manifesting guide. And if you're really committed, you can join my membership program, The Wisdom Vault, where you'll have unlimited access to my courses. Right now, you'll have full access to the Intuition course, the Accurate Thinking course, and soon, the Manifestation Mastery course, which will come with 52 weeks of manifestation tips. One new tip each week. You can learn more about that at yesdaniel.com forward slash courses. 
Well, until next time, this is your friend and host, Daniel DeNove, urging you to follow your bliss. Live your life from inner signals. Be inner directed as you engage in the epic adventure. <laughs>